Okay guys and gals, what we're going to talk about today is making larger Pompano rig floats. A couple years ago I made a video and uh, you know I think it's just called uh, Pompano rig floats but you'll see it on the channel. But anyways, you know these floats uh, you can make them for uh, pennies on the dollar uh, using inexpensive items like these flip flops. Uh, you could probably give them for a buck a piece. But anyways, when I made this video, uh, I was limited to tubing that was less than or equal to a half an inch because, you know, I don't own anything bigger than a half inch drill. Now I've got a, you know, electric screw gun here that uh, that has a half inch uh, chuck on it and you may have a regular drill. But anyways, that's the limitation this whole process because anything bigger than a half just won't work. Well, that's fine, but you know, there are times where I wish I had a little bit bigger float. Maybe I'm carrying a, you know, a little bit more bait and I want more buoyancy. So I, uh, I decided to think about what we could do to change that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how you can make these floats. You can see the difference in, in the size. They're, they're almost twice as big. And uh, it's going to be pretty easy to do. You know, even if you don't own the tools to get this done. I'm sure you have a friend that does and it's pretty simple. So stick with me here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run down what you're going to need when you go to uh, make this jig. Okay. First thing you're going to need is some half inch copper. Now this doesn't matter if it's type L, type M, you know, uh, buddy's got an extra chunk. You're just going to cut a three inch piece of copper and then when you get done, you know, and you can do this after it's all put together, but what you're going to do is you're going to sand that edge. So, you know, it's a little bit sharper than what it was before, uh, before you cut it with these, uh, these pipe cutters. And like I say, you know, if you don't have one of these, don't worry about it. I'll bet you the store will even cut it for you if you ask them. And when you go to buy your copper, don't buy an eight foot length. You don't need that. Some stores like Lowe's or uh, Home Depot may have small segments, maybe as small uh, as uh, a foot or two, or you may get stuck for buying a four foot length. But either way, uh, you need a you need a three inch piece of copper here and uh, a little sharpened on the end. Now, uh, I've got a sanding machine, but you could use whatever you wanted. You know, if you wanted to use a file, you could do it. This isn't exact science. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is we're going to need something to put that in. And this is just a, a half inch female threaded uh, copper fitting. You know, all this stuff is going to be available at, uh, at Lowe's. And um, I prefer Lowe's. You know, they treat veterans well, so... But anyways, we're, uh, we're going to need to put this into this fitting, but we can't just uh, put it in there. And a lot of guys don't want to, you know, spend the time soldering it. All you need is a little bit of, uh, you know, epoxy. You know, you can get it at the dollar store, you know, if, if you don't need Gorilla Glue. But uh, anyways, go ahead and, uh, you know, rough this up a little bit with some sandpaper. I recommend always buying a roll of this plumber's sanding tape. It's really handy. And uh, after you get done cutting it, you're going to want to rough up the ends so the epoxy holes. The other thing you're going to want to do too is, is after you get done sanding and cutting, you know, you don't want burrs, especially at the cutting end. You don't want burrs in this, uh, but I always take care of both ends. Um, but what you can do is take some of that plumber's tape and wrap it around a pencil and just start working the edge to get rid of all those burrs. You know, and other end too. You know, get rid of that. You know, get rid of all the burrs. So, anyways, enough said about that. So, now we glue this in. Okay, we let that cure for at least 24 hours. And now what we're going to do is we have to figure out how we can, you know, get this in shape for our drill and be less than a half an inch. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this fitting here, and I'm going to have uh, the sizes and uh, part numbers and links to all this. Hopefully I can find, you know, the, the copper and stuff you, uh, you should probably just get at the store. You should probably get all of this at the store. You're not going to pay any shipping. You know, I know we got COVID times, but, you know, use precautions. And if you don't want to, get it on Amazon. I'll try to provide you with links for that too. But uh, 
Anyways, uh, we take this fitting here, and all this does is convert from a half inch threaded to a uh, quarter inch threaded, okay? And all this stuff you're going to tighten up. Grab a couple crescent wrenches or, you know, pliers, whatever you got, and uh, just tighten these up as best you can. And the next part you're going to get is, uh, this is just an adapter for uh, air compressor hoses. And you can get these, if they don't have it at Lowe's or Home Depot, maybe you have a Harbor Freight next to you, or any parts store may have these too, but I guarantee you, I bet you're going to find these at, at Lowe's and Home Depot, no problem, and maybe cheaper at, at Harbor Freight. So same thing here, you're going to you're going to put that in and you're going to tighten it up best you can and that's it you know that is your completed jig and uh what i'll do is uh i will glue this up and i will stop the uh the video and show you how this thing works but before i do that i do want to show you uh you know why we we chose this uh compressor fitting well the big thing is is we need to be less than uh, a half an inch and it is by like ten thousandths of an inch you know some people might say well you know geez why didn't you just go out and get yourself a a uh, a quarter inch brass fitting jim and put it in there and you know and then chuck up on that fitting that nipple well guess what you can't do that because this is about ten thousandths over of a half an inch and uh you know originally when i made this tube here this is like lamp parts i get the links for all that in the original video but you know this is uh probably uh, at least ten thousandths less too so that's why we chose this and we needed something with a hole in it and uh, the trick of the hole is is when we get done we're gonna punch probably four floats at a time and then when we're done i use a little aluminum rod here but you don't need to use that you don't need to spend that kind of money you can just you know go to the grocery store buy some shish kebab uh sticks this is a small piece of one i use but you can see the diameter is perfect and the purpose of that hole is is now we punch out that sandal four times and we need to get those floats out of there so you know we take our rod i i, I rounded this off a little bit we don't want to put holes in our floats and uh go ahead and, and push them out i've tried making more than four at a time and they just start to bind up in the tube um but anyways let's stop the video right here i'm going to go ahead and epoxy you know this and tighten it all up and once it's dry let's go ahead and see how it works i just wanted to make sure that i covered when uh when you go to glue this up make sure you don't put it upright or whatever because it it may run into the threads you know either that or the safest bet is to put your fittings together with your pliers first and then go ahead and glue this in you don't have to worry about uh, getting any epoxy in the threads and making your life difficult or having to buy a new fitting now the other thing I want to mention too I also uh, mentioned this in one of my rig making videos is uh, this is one of those Sputnik sinkers but what I like to use it for is when I'm making my rigs I'll uh, shish kebab them like this and then when I go to poke my mono through you know I got I got a nice little hole there so you know just wanted to cover that okay so we've cut our pipe we've sharpened the end we've taken the burrs out of uh, both ends with our pencil and our plumber's tape here this sanding tape uh, we got our fittings all in and we tighten them up and there it is that's the finished product now one huge tip here you want to make sure you chuck this thing right you're going to be tempted to want to put the chuck over the whole end here and all you're going to get is a bad chuck and it's going to wobble so what we got to do is we got to chuck it just on the the end here on the end of that nipple and the more you do it the better you get at it but just what i try to do is i try to put my uh screw gun right even with that edge that i want to lock with right at the end of the uh screw gun all right let me try to give you a better angle there yeah, that's a little better angle so anyways that's where you're chucking it right there and if you chuck it there you know it's going to run true it's not going to be perfect you know it's just a threaded joint but you know don't be tempted to drop it over the whole top 
like that. You can't. It's going to wobble for you. Um, just chuck it right to the end here. And All right, so let's see how it works. Try to help those out. I think if you push too hard, you're going to put a hole through it. But, you know, that's the purpose of, you know, sanding that and rounding it off. But there you go. I mean, how easy is that? You know, and before you know it, you're going to you're gonna have a ton of floats. Now, if, uh, if for some reason you wanted to try to save even more money building this, you could do a co-op with a couple fishing buddies and... Do the same thing with making sinkers and, you know, um, possibly making your own rigs. But anyways, that'll do it. That's how you're going to make your big Pompano rig floats. And once you've got this thing made, you know, you've got it for life. You know, you'll never have to go to a store again. You can, you can pick any color you want under the sun. And they usually have some pretty decent colors. I, I prefer the pink and... Uh, this uh, tan it works good for me. Some people like the yellow. So anyways, that'll do it. And uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe and that'll do it for this video.